at the Nintendo 64, without doubt my favorite video game console of all time. During its lifetime, it couldn't be a rival for the PlayStation. Despite that, this piece of overpriced hardware still got it all. Masterpieces, platforms, racing games, shooters, collectathons, and a lot, a lot of Mario games. But none of the N64 games received the same attention. Some of these games sold poorly, mainly because of the lack of publicity, low budget, not getting an American release, or even not being a competition for the big titans of the 64 bits era. Sup guys, Galos here, and today, as a tribute for these kind of games, I present you the top 5 of the most underrated N64 games. Keep in mind that the entire list is going to be based in my opinion, therefore, most of the games that you probably know won't appear on this list. If you are in disagreement with one of my picks, please let me know in the comments below which are your favorite underrated N64 games. But enough talk, let's go back to the 90s. Rareware might be the most important company that Nintendo collaborated with. It was responsible for some of the biggest hits of Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64. Donkey Kong Country, Killer Instinct, Battletoads, and Banjo Kazooie are the best examples of it. But what if I tell you that, even with a big company like Rareware on your side, if you don't give enough advertising to your games, it might end up as a commercial failure. That's what happened to Conker's Bass for Day. Developed by Rareware and launched in 2001, the story tells us about Conker the Squirrel, a red squirrel who embarks on a quest to return home after a night of binge drinking with his friends. Conker's Bad for Day is considered a platform game, but being honest with you, this game belongs to a lot of categories such as action game, survival, shooter, and even racing game, making it one of the best games of the Nintendo 64. And that's not all, the game has a lot of jokes, parodies, and the best aspect of any video game, fourth breaking wall. Also, Conker has one of the best multiplayer modes of the Nintendo 64, with a ton of different game modes and playstyles that I doubt you will get tired of it soon. Even with all of this, the game only sold less than 50,000 copies, making it one of the worst selling games of the N64, and there is a lot of reason for it. First, Nintendo didn't want to get involved with the project at all. They knew since the beginning that the game won't sell enough due of the main audience of the game, which was a mature audience, and we all know that Nintendo always goes for a kid audience and they don't put much effort on m games. Besides, the game was a bit expensive to produce, and on top of that, the game was released near to the end of the N64 lifespan. At least we know that Red tried to advertise the game in his own way with coloring books, contests in college, t-shirts, and even fucking Conquer Condom. Man, I want some Conquer Condom so badly! Being a new first-person shooting game during the end of the 90s was very tough. For example, GoldenEye became one of the best games of the system, Half-Life is still an influence until this day, and games such as Dai Katana or Super Noah Arc 3D were a commercial failure or a joke. But what about that weird franchise called Turok for the N64 MPC? Turok was a game developed by Acclaim and launched in 1997. The player controls Turok, a Native American warrior who must stop the evil campaigner from conquering the universe with an ancient and powerful weapon. The gameplay is very similar to any shooter of the era, but exploration and puzzle solving takes an important role during the adventure. Even if the game sold very well to receive two sequels and a multiplayer game compared to other titles like GoldenEye or Perfect Dark, no one talks about this franchise with nostalgia like the others, which is a shame, because this game deserves more love. Although, consider what happened to Evolution, the Xbox reboot, and a ton of console games, I'm sure we're not getting a new game for a long time. But, you can enjoy this game and Turok 2 on modern consoles with the HD port, you should give it a try. Who knows, maybe we'll get in an HD port of the third game in a future.
The Nintendo 64 was home of memorable racing games like Mario Kart 64, Diddy Kong Racing, LEGO Racers, South Park Rally. But for me, the most underrated racing game from the console is definitely Mickey Speedway USA. Developed by Rareware and launched in 2000, the story goes like this. Pluto was captured by Whistles for having a diamond collar and Mickey alongside his friends must travel through USA to find the Whistles and rescue his best friend. If we talk about the gameplay, it's pretty much the same to Mario Kart 64. You have tournament mode, time trial, battle mode and even a cheat mode. Though the major difference compared to big racing games from the N64 are without doubt the tracks. You see, for a Mickey game, you will probably expect in tracks related to Disney World or at least Mickey's World, right? Well, you are so wrong, my friend. Mickey and his friends must race through important places from USA like Chicago, New York and more. Back then, the game was well received and gave decent scores for a Disney game. Nevertheless, it didn't become a huge success like Mario Kart 64 or Crash Team Racing. And also the game was launched where the N64 lifespan was close to its end. Even so, if you are already tired of Mario Kart or you just want to try another fun clone of it, this game might be the perfect choice for you. I'm sure you won't regret it. Fighting games gained a ton of popularity back in the 90s with revolutionary games such as Fatal Fury, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, King of Fighters, Killer Instinct and more. The Nintendo 64 received arcade ports of some famous fighting games and also was home on one of the best Nintendo franchises until this day, Super Smash Bros. But none of them were so unique and weird at the same time than Play Fighter 63 and a third. Developed by Interplay Productions, the story happened in... Hold on. Does this game have a story in the first place? You sure? Okay, thank you. The story is very, very weird. So I'm gonna make a simple summary of it to make it easier to understand. Basically, a purple meteor fell from the space into the eyes of Clay Moto. At the same time, a mad scientist wants to take it to his laboratory to elaborate a powerful mutagen code to dominate the world by turning everything into clay. Yeah, it's a bit weird. But what do you expect from a video game where everything is made of clay? Clay Fighters, as you probably noticed, is a parody of important fighting games of that time, implementing mechanics from these games like for example, the special meter from Street Fighter Alpha, parry mechanic from Street Fighter 3, combo system from Killer Instinct, and even its own version of Mortal Kombat's fatality called Claytality. The gameplay was heavily criticized back then, a lot of video game magazines say the game was bad or even unplayable because of the lame program hitboxes and hotboxes. What do I have to say about it? Well, it's true. The game is mediocre as hell due to its unresponsible controllers, ugly backgrounds and pitiful soundtrack. But it is so bad that it's good at the same time thanks to guest characters like Edward Jim, the excellent audio quality and every animated sprite is made on clay. Besides, every time I watch or play something animated in stop motion, I immediately fell in love. They are so unique, with a ton of love and effort put by its producers. If you want to play a wacky fighting game with your friends to laugh for a while, this game, with all its weaknesses, is very fun to play with a good company. Before heading to the number one on the list, here's my honorable mention to all of the games that deserve more recognition from any N64 lover like me.
imagine being one of the best and most unique games on the N64, but not a lot of people know your existence because you never left Japan during the 90s. Imagine being so important to the Japanese audience that your main protagonist appears in Super Smash Bros. Brawl and 4 has a assist trophy. Imagine getting an official English dub for a worldwide launch but didn't get localized because you were launching near to the end of the N64 lifespan. That, my friend, is the story of one of my favorite games of all time. But what is sin and punishment? Developed by Pressure and published in 2000, the game takes place in the near future of 2007, when humanity is struggling with a global famine. Scientists develop a new species to raise as hood, but the creatures revolt and war breaks out. During the adventure, you take control of Saki Amamiya. He, alongside Eren and a mystery girl called Echi, must defend his planet from creatures called ruffians and an international peace-seeker organization called Armed Volunteers from destroying the world with the war between these two bands. Sin and Punishment is an arcade-style race shooter and shooting gallery game. You take control of Saki's lateral movement and a targeting reticle to point at the enemies and kill them with projectiles. For close combat, Saki uses a sword equipped already on his gun to keep himself safe. Very similar to Star Fox 64 if you want a reference of the gameplay. Playing this game for the first time without knowing anything was really a unique experience. The graphics look amazing even to this day. The gameplay is very addictive, the story was deep with a ton of unexpected plot twists, the characters were interesting, the voice acting was decent, and good lord the soundtrack. Definitely the best aspect of the game. Toshiya Yamanaka wrote us one of the best soundtracks for the Nintendo 64. Just listen to some of the tracks and you will think the same as me. I already say why this game wasn't localized worldwide during the 1064 era, but at least we got a virtual console release back in 2007 and a sequel called Sin and Punishment Star Successors for the Nintendo Wii. But I'm still want more of the franchise. Maybe, just maybe, Saki might be a DLC fighter for Smash Ultimate. The chances are very low, but his Aces trophy was removed to be exchanged for a mid custom. Who knows? But one thing is sure. You must play this game at least once, it's really worth it. And there you have it, I try to be original with my list, but it's really hard to create a list with just 5 games to begin with. The Nintendo 64 wasn't as powerful as the PlayStation 1, but it has a lot of item gems that you should play with your friends. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate any kind of support to keep growing my channel. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you the next time. Goodbye.